and this don't team mean is offend. offended by anything that another member of this team says at this yeah, point, then we did not team. have wine day, right? Hey there, it's me again, Rebecca Rutherford, director of Underbox Digital, this here's Silent Ange, and in this episode of Event 365, we're going back to basics. See, when we first kicked this whole shebang off, we started off each new episode with a little reminder about the point of the whole enterprise. As is clear from everything you've seen since then, there are lots of super effective ways to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Around these parts, though, we feel pretty strongly about the superiority of one particular strategy and its ability to help you keep your event live 365 days a year. So today, the star of the show, besides me, obviously, is content marketing. And here's why. As you can see, content marketing is really, really ridiculously good at engaging an audience and keeping the lines of communication open before, during, and after the actual event. Did you ever think that maybe there's more to life than being really, really, really ridiculously good at engaging an audience. And you want this because it's a heck of a lot easier to sell someone on coming to your event if A, they're new registrants and you can offer them a good taste of the experience beforehand, or B, they're return registrants and you've maintained the connection you worked so hard to build with them the first time around. Now that you're sold, here's a few ideas on how to fit content marketing into your already busy schedule. First and foremost, Sketch out at least a rough content calendar well ahead of time to keep yourself on track and guard against turning out low quality pieces in the mad rush to publish something. And right here, I want to pause for a quick PSA. The first rule of content marketing is quality always trumps quantity. The second rule of content marketing is quality always trumps quantity. So as you plan your content schedule, be realistic about your own limitations in terms of resources and time. It is a far, far better thing to put out just a few high value pieces than dozens of quick and dirty blog posts or infographics or whatever else that don't provide your audience any truly new and useful information. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. I'm sorry you had to see me like that. <laughs> you ready, girl? For ideas on content types and topics, look no further than the subject matter of the sessions and keynote speeches from your show. There's countless blog posts and webinars and videos just waiting to be put together there. Speakers and presenters are also an excellent source for new ideas or even production of the content itself. And along those same lines, don't make the mistake of thinking you have to be the one to do all of the dirty work here. I don't want to work. Mm -hmm. I just want to pay on my grandma day. Ever heard of content aggregation? It might just be your BFF. Here's how it could work for you. Pre-event, you come up with two or three questions that you send to each speaker or presenter. Asking them to answer any or all questions in just two or three sentences. Aggregate all the answers and you've got yourself a supremely easy but high quality blog post. During the event, you set up a basic video booth, nothing fancy. All you need is a fairly quiet corner, a camera, and a branded backdrop. Invite your speakers and industry thought leaders to answer a particular question on camera in less than one minute. What you end up with is who knows how many bite-sized pieces of content to sprinkle across social media and or a longer video of the best answers stitched together. Gold! This very same content can live on long after the event in the form of infographics, still images featuring pull quotes, and so on. Oh, come on! I know! On the last day of your event, ask attendees to go on camera and answer the question, in 30 seconds or less, what was your favorite moment or biggest takeaway at this year's event? This gives you scads of great testimonials you can use in every format imaginable in the lead up to the next year's event. Bing, da bing, 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 gold! See? Content marketing for events is doable. And if you do it right, it will pay dividends. Well, that's all we've got for you today, folks. Be sure to keep up with us on Twitter and LinkedIn for more content marketing tips and tricks. And of course, don't forget to catch up on earlier episodes of Event 365 to learn even more about how to keep things rolling year-round. See you next time.